okay. You really want it. Do you? No, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, wait a minute. And they're like, right, girl, I'm like, yeah, now you started. Now I'm going to give you the whole thing. I'm going to fold it for you. And that's what happened. I'm like, Lord, can I just go to a gym and, and not, like, you know, just be like, oh, just working out. Yes, enjoy your presence in the middle of the gym. I, I call the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just come and just minister. Do your amazing work in this gym. So I don't have to. But he's like, no. <laughs> you gotta do some too. So it's just it, it's awesome, man. Even at the gym, you know, when people are like, you know, some people like, oh, man, my my back is really bothering me, you know. This guy's like, Man, my back is really bothering me, you know, and I'm like, Okay. I'm like, should I pray for him? I don't know. He was like, No, and he just kept complaining. I was like, I guess I gotta pray for him more. <laughs> So sometimes you don't need a word of knowledge. Sometimes you don't need, you don't need all that. You just come and ask. Oh my God. Hurts so bad. So it's like we, we always ask for like, oh God, you know. And I've gotten the words of knowledge that were super cool. And they were like, wow, it's so encouraging. But then there's like the simple like, hey, I need it. Like, can you just pray for me? And sometimes I, I, I admit it. Sometimes I'm like, I just don't want to like do it right now. I'm like being very stubborn with it, like, no, 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 but they, they keep asking, so I'm like, okay, I get you. I think they get a little weird, because they're like, right here? <laughs> <laughs> they're always like, they're like, right here? Like, I thought you were going to like put me on a... <laughs> and don't make it weird in the gym, like, you laying your hands on me? Or like, grab your pinky, or whatever. <laughs> you want the true change, I got it right now for you. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, it's cool, you know, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool just to, just to minister, not even trying. I, I, I find it that when I'm trying, when, I, when I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm going to go here and here, and then it's going to be awesome, you're going to move, and like, I'm just going to, like, oh, it's going to flow so beautifully, I'm like, I'm like, nothing is happening, people don't even want to come near me. But when I go unexpected and just let, like, yield to the Holy Spirit and let Him move, it just happens. It's beautiful. Like, people are just, you know, I just start talking in two, three seconds. They're crying. I have no idea what I say. I have no idea what I say. Honestly, half of the time, I don't know what I'm saying. But I know it's good because it's touching their heart and God is moving. And I don't, I don't fill myself with anything else but His Word and His Spirit. I don't, I don't feel, so I don't have anything else to give you. <laughs> like, when I talk to people, it's about 10 seconds or 30 seconds, and I'm really trying hard after that. I'm really trying hard to stay in conversation about whatever. Because it's just like, man, you got to know Jesus. If you know Him, if you experience Him, you have everything. He is everything. Like, some of the stubborn people that, like, went, I know there's some in this room that went and tried it everywhere else, and it was like, nothing's fulfilling me, nothing's giving me. It's just Jesus. He is everything you want. So, I try to tell that to people in the right perspective. It, you guys already know him, so you guys, it's not new to you guys. But to them, it's uh, it's a beautiful arrangement that I get to do, uh, a meeting arrangement, and they just get to meet him, and they get life change, transformation. They get, even though it's, sometimes it's just a seed planted there, even though sometimes it's like you you get to minister. Some people I have in my life, some people I have that I that that are with me that I personally invest my time with and, and you know do some counseling and I see that it's not happening. Like it's not like oh my how can you not? You were just weeping and you were just like that, yeah, you know. And it's just like that. Love is he the Lord keeps reminding me. Love is patient. Remember how patient I was with you? Fifteen years, friend. Uh, just, just be patient, because that's what love is—is is being patient and and not growing your, you know. Because when you when you start to do like into these places, I always felt like, hey, I'm I'm an evangelist, so I can just go give it to people and I'm out. <laughs> but then, uh, uh, see, that's the beautiful thing about him correcting you in these things, because he's like, no, 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 no. I want you to know how it is to walk with them, to counsel them, to give them guidance and, and, and not get frustrated. If you want like 
my heart, if you want to be like my child and experience what I experienced and go through everything, you got to go through that same thing process with mm-hmm. every single one. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I do. <laughs> but, but that's that. That's that constant. That's that love. The, the only thing that can that can win is love. You'll get frustrated. You get irritated. You grow to the place where you grow cold with people, and then you're producing absolutely nothing in their life. Then you're just frustrated with their sin or with them falling, and then that's all you see. Mm-hmm. That's all we tend to see. As soon as we fall away from love, we, we we start to focus on what they're doing wrong, and what do we start to speak? Hey. Could you straighten up already? Because you're doing wrong, right? So there's no patience. There's no nothing, you know. So uh, it, it's it's a growing process for me to grow in in, in the counseling and discipleship with people. Um, I, I like I say, I never feel qualified for anything. And Paul said the same thing. We, I don't, I don't feel qualified for any of it. I'm so nervous. <laughs> like I'm, I like, I don't know what's going to happen. But Holy Spirit, I know you possess me. So go ahead, do your thing. So, yeah, I don't know why. I'm, am I the only one talking? To you? <laughs> no, this is beautiful, man. Uh, so, but this is this is my real life, guys. I don't I don't do much. Like I said, I just I just want more opportunities, and and the Lord has brought them into my life, or people in my life, and uh, they just watch. I just have to just always just and and I said this to Paul. It went from like, oh, my calling is evangelist and preach the gospel, give people Jesus to every single person. Him correcting me and and he said, what will preach that is your relationship with me. You are to make my re- this relationship attractive for people to want it. You can't just give them something that you don't know nothing about. It's like... I'm trying to give you a relationship with Jesus, but I, I personally, I'm not in that fullness. I don't, I don't, I don't have it to where it's attractive. You know what I'm saying to people? Like they got to see it in my life. They got to experience that. Like, hey man, this guy, he really believes this, and he's really like enjoying this better than anything else. Even like, even with, it's greater than people. No, I, I love people, but I'm saying it's greater than any relationship with a person. It's, and it's it's somebody that he does by faith. He can't see them. He can't see God, so he does it all by faith. How can that outweigh something so natural, so, so tangible? So that's been the shift change from such an like, evangelist type of thing to, to and I think in, in uh, what did you 